Hey there, everyone. It is so great to be here for another Yarnier exclusive event. And I am joined by my friend, Tony Lipsy, that I'm so excited to have here. We have been trying to do this for months, um, but we is busy. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Tony has right. been, um, we started, let's see, I want to say we started about a year and a half ago having designers in residence for Yarnier. And really, it's just an opportunity for me to get to work with amazing people. Um, some are up and coming designers, some like Tony are established, um, but just to sort of, I always feel like if you can have some fresh, um, a fresh mind, different perspective in your business, your business only gets better. And plus it makes me feel good when we can all cross promote. So I was thrilled when Tony, who has a slam um, uh, schedule, agreed to do it for <laughs> fall, winter. And now that time has come to an end. The December box, I know I can't like, I can't, I can't, uh, it just, I can't. Um, <laughs> the December box, Yarnier box, which by the way, we only have as of the recording of this 18 left and, and it includes an exclusive color of my yarn Montoya Merino that's only in the box. So once it's gone, it's gone. The bonus pattern is Tony's. It's our first Tunisian um, design from her. She had been doing crochet the rest of it. Um, it's a little gift. Get it. While it's while it is um, available because it is about to be gonzo. But anyways, it's the last of her six um, boxes to do with us, and we're gonna miss we're gonna miss uh, you so much. But hopefully, we'll our this will not be the last. You yeah, see I mean, this is just this is just not even close. <laughs> yeah. So um, I mean, you have such a successful business in so many ways between your YouTube channel and your school and your designs and and your book and um and your product lines and all the things but um I always like for guests to sort of let the audience get to know them in their own words um I feel like then we all kind of feel like we know each other and if we all feel like we know each other um at the very least we're kinder to one another but also we're gonna shop with each other so um if you would I don't think I've ever asked you how you got into the industry because you and I, our paths didn't cross when you would have thought that they would have. We really yeah. didn't even meet until we started talking about doing this together. And now mm -hmm. that seems crazy to me, but. I know we've both been around here for so long. And the fact that, that we've only worked together at this point yeah. is wild to me, but I'm glad that we had the opportunity to do it. Um, so thank you so much for having me first off. And Kind of how I got my start, it was really kind of by accident. So I was crafting just for myself and for friends and family and gifts and things. And it kind of got to the point where my friends and family were like, girl, the scarves, great. Hats, love them, but we've got plenty. Appreciate you, but that is enough. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take that hint. And I'm going to find someone else to give my gorgeous hats and scarves to. So I actually um, did my very first craft show shortly after that in a literal church basement. Oh, and um, I sold one thing, but you couldn't tell me nothing. I was officially a business owner at that point. And um, yeah, that was kind of how I was got my start. Tunisian crochet, crochet, a combination of both. Traditional crochet. I had not discovered okay. Tunisian crochet yet. Okay. So this was probably back in like 2013, like fall 2013, when I actually like established my business, did my very first show. Because um, aside from doing that first craft show, I did not have kind of a presence for my business. It was just, I'm going to do this show and I'm selling physical pieces. That's kind of how you it started. To turn out, those shows are so hard to do for oh, any yeah. maker, but for knitting and crochet, it takes so much time to put into one piece and it's really hard. Um, it's really hard to make money producing something that takes you, you know, four to 40 hours to make. Yeah. So do you, how, like what it was the prep process for that, especially since this was your sort of first hurrah in the business world. For the first show, I mean, I really didn't know what I was doing. Like I I looked up blogs and I was on Pinterest. I was on Etsy. I'm like trying to find what's the best way to even prep for a craft show. So one of the things I found was like having a nice array of items. And by array of items, I was like, oh, I'll do amigurumi and home decor and some accessories and literally what else I can think of. You know, I just... It was kind of a wild mix, but it was a really great opportunity for me to get a feel for what works and what didn't. Like my brain, anytime I'm looking at something, like I'm gathering data and I'm like, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. We're going to change this. We're going to tweak this just a little bit because it's kind of working, but not quite. So I never looked at it like this was a failure or this was an unsuccessful show. If anything, that first experience was 
me saying like, is this something that I'm actually interested in? Can I make this work? Um, and you know, what am I going to take away from this experience? Like, what am I going to do differently at my next show so I can get two sales or five sales, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and setting those smaller goals. I never really kind of drank my own Kool-Aid and hyped myself up. Like, yeah, we're going to make a hundred sales. Like that was never the goal. Yeah. It was to you go and just, like a school. Yes. I was like, I'm going to go and get a little bit better. And I mean, early on, aside from like the sweat equity of it, it wasn't a really expensive process. Like I was doing church craft shows and school craft shows and, you know, not really hitting the eventual audience that I wanted to reach, but it was a really good kind of testing ground for me without having to come out with a lot was of money. this in the Ohio area at that point? Yeah. yeah, this was in like the central Ohio area. And before I knew the industry and the people out there, like I didn't have the connections to know which shows to actually apply for. So it was like literally whatever came up or whatever somebody suggested, I was like, yep, sign me up. I'll do it. <laughs> I wish it's funny, like the timelines are so close, but, but really probably just, if you had been like, I shot uh, a PBS show in, uh, in Ohio near in the Columbus area, I think. Really? Um, That's where I was. Is that right? What is the, what is the city that it was in? I don't know if I remember. Anyways, it was in Ohio and oh. um, we were we would have just definitely had you on as a guest is my point. Yeah. Oh, we, I but I mean, you, you were listen, probably not ready there yet. But not not even close. Not I even close. It was, I want to say, yeah, this says 2013. So mm -hmm. maybe not, but it's just like, that's what I was saying. Like there's been so many. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, the more time I spend in this industry, the more I realize like how small of a world it is. Yeah. Like so many of us have crossed paths together yeah. or like work for a lot of the same companies or like even using a lot of the same products. And yeah. I mean, you never know. You never know who you're going to run across. Well, there's like three people in the, or three companies in the industry that have money. And so everybody works. <laughs> and <laughs> and it's not like it's, it's, true, it's our money. It's not like money. It's not like yeah. yeah money yeah um, yeah so like you turn in and then you try to like you do one for you one for them kind of thing mm -hmm. and you know all the much. we all end up working together but it's great because then we can recommend each other for things and we can Definitely. you know like uh I actually just brought your name up in a meeting I was having just as Aww. like throwing out so like that's that's one of the great things about the industry so awesome. what was the what was the sort of impetus to go from um church bazaar to what you've created today um, honestly, the transition happened because I was, um, I was at a craft show and a owner of a local yarn shop came in and she kind of saw my product and asked me a bunch of questions about like where I get my ideas from and am I working off patterns or things that I made up. And I told her it was like a good mix of both. And we kind of hit it off. And she said, you know, I'm looking for a new crochet teacher. Is that something you'd be interested in? And I was like, just regular people teach crochet classes at yarn stores. Like that was, it was an, it was a huge honor to me. Like I was very much like, I can't even believe I just got asked to do this. This oh, is the coolest oh thing. So that was kind of my first opportunity to teach someone to crochet. Cause at that point I'd never even tried. So teaching someone to crochet in person, then transitioned into teaching online. And then it kind of everything just kind of blew up from there. That's, but that's where it started, like teaching at, and I'm going to shout them out really quick, Yarn It and Haberdashery in Grandview, Michigan. If you've never been before, you have to go. It's a fantastic shop and the owners are just, they're fantastic. They're so good. I love a Haberdashery. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love it. I love it. It's a fantastic shop. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, I want to talk a little bit about I really just want to catch up. I want to hear about all of the things that you've been working on and then talk about what's, you know, what's next. Uh, we were talking about this before we, we jumped on here. It's, it's such an American thing to say like, oh, you're leaving this one thing. What's next? Like, we're not very good at giving each other breath. Yeah. And I definitely want to give breath. And I hope that your what ne what's next is you're going to take a long nap. Oh, but honey. Yes. Speaking <laughs> but of breath, I am taking a deep breath <laughs> for a little <laughs> while. Like, 2022 has been really interesting because like the momentum of 2020 is just kind of still continuing to fly through the craft yeah. market. Yeah. So, um, so riding that momentum and being present and, and there for my audience has been really important to me this year. Um, but starting off next year, I really want to kind of take a moment away to kind of regroup and figure out what I want TL Yarn Crafts to look like moving forward. I have a couple really big, exciting opportunities that are happening that, of course, I can't talk about, but those are going to be happening through 2022. So after this kind of short break that I take right at the beginning of the year, I'm going to be jumping right
right back into it. Um, and even though I am taking a break, I am running a crochet along in January because I always do. My Make It Cow starts up in mid-January. And that's the whole point of that is like you're coming off this season yeah. of like holiday making or craft shows or whatever it is. It's really doing busy. for others. Yeah. Doing yeah. for others. And now it's time to do for ourselves. So you pick a project either that you've started or um, something that's brand new and you just work on it very casually together and we just share and encourage each other for a few weeks. So it's not a specific cow or so this crochet along is just all teal yarn crafts patterns okay. literally whatever teal yarn crafts pattern you're into and you can do one pattern you can do five patterns whatever it is it'll be over a six week time period i usually pick a pattern as well to work on and yeah and then by the end we all have these fun and finished projects i love i love that because it is kind of retrospective i mean we have we as designers have the tendency to say like oh i need to come up with something new we got to do new we got to do new got to do new and it takes a little bit of the joy out of the process, like love our jobs, all of the things. Of but if you can sit back and sort of look at patterns from year or years past and sort of relish in that with your community, there's mm -hmm. something quiet about that and introspective. And I think a really lovely way to kick off a year. I think so too. And I, and what I appreciate about it is it's an opportunity for people who are new to TL yarn crafts to kind of get that soft introduction to be like you, the world is your oyster, almost 200 patterns that you can choose from. And you can make the smallest thing, a little hat, or you can make a, a cardigan or a blanket, literally whatever you're interested in. We just kind of do it in this time period, supporting and encouraging each other. And I mean, for me, it's an, it's a special treat because just like you said, I get to look back in my pattern library, like, Ooh, what am I going to kind of reinvent right now, you yeah. know, and, and have that moment to, to go back to kind of that design process or that idea and, and give it some fresh life. So we are at mid or mid December. Yeah. Maybe. Um, are people can download your patterns at any point, but they have plenty of time. This gives them about four weeks to get supplies and all of the things. Are they coming to you to get supplies? Are they going to LASs? Are they like, what do you like? What I mean, that's, that? that's kind of the fun part, right? So like I have. I have multiple kits available with Lion Brand. So that's kind of one of the easiest ways to get your project together for Make It, the Make It Crochet Along in January. Um, I always recommend going to a local yarn store, many of which are stocking like the nicer hand-dyed yarns and then, you know, some of the more accessible, um, maybe other fibers that you might be interested in. So definitely start with your local yarn store. Otherwise, take advantage of like literal sales everywhere right now. Like all of my favorite yarn companies are having sales. Um, so definitely check those out and stock up. You don't want to do inventory, inventory for January. It's like yeah. everything must go. Everything must go. Yeah. Like go get it. Now is a really, really great time to get it all because a lot of these places are offering free shipping or like, you know, lower prices on shipping, which is nice. So you can kind of stock up for Make It Cal or whatever else you've got planned to make in 23. Oh, Cal. I thought you said Cowl. Got it. Oh, cow. Crochet along. Yeah. Now yeah. that makes much more sense. Got it. <laughs> um, you had recently, well, I'll go back to that. So mm -hmm. when was your transition to, I feel like the majority of the things that I see you facing forward with are Tunisia and crochet. Yeah. yeah. When, when did that sort of transition happen. Yeah. So fun story. I always like telling this one because I say this is how I started believing in ghosts. Um, so I actually went to Vogue Knit Live in 2017. Okay. And it was my first time going, very exciting, got to meet a lot of like makers that I'd seen online and like interface with some of these companies. It was, that felt like my coming out. This is like, T.O. Yarn Crafts is about to get huge and I just yeah. need to like hobnob and rub shoulders, you know? So I was at the event and I kind of broke off from my group to go use the restroom. When on my way back, I uh, ran into the Malabrigo booth and there was a woman sitting there with like this massive crochet hook. This thing was like, huge and she was working with like this rope and I'm probably like I don't know a good like 20 30 feet from her and I just stopped in my tracks and I'm like watching for a second and I was transfixed completely like nothing in the maker world has made me feel like that since yeah. before then or since like truly so I walk up to her and I'm like sorry if I'm a little extra right now but I need you to tell me exactly what you're doing and exactly how to do it like I need this in my life 
So she was really nice enough to let me sit down and she's kind of telling me about Tunisian crochet, about the tools, how it's different with this yarn and all that good stuff. So I soaked in kind of that preliminary information. And then I get home and I realize like, nobody's really talking about this. Like yeah. there's not a lot of YouTube videos, books, tutorials, like there's just not much on this subject. And I'm like, okay, this just like blew me out of my socks and nobody's talking about this. That's crazy. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the reins. I'm going to be a champion for this technique because I think it is just so stinking cool. So that's actually the reason I started my YouTube channel. My very first video, the absolute beginner's guide to Tunisian crochet was kind of the, the kickoff for the channel. And I did a few other videos in that initial Tunisian crochet series. And, um, and then for me personally, and as a designer, I was like, you know, I've got all these tutorials going now, once people get the technique down, they're going to want to make projects. So I came out with a whole series of Tunisian crochet projects right at the jump so I was like you know if I'm going to take that time and be really thoughtful about introducing Tunisian crochet to folks I want to be able to guide them through kind of that whole beginning part of their journey from learning it to to tools to what's the right yarn to here's a good first pattern here's a pattern to work after that um, and really making sure they have all the resources to like have that strong foundation of Tunisian crochet to then take it to that next level, whatever that means for them. Um, so yeah, it was it was a discovery phase for me of this new technique. And then on just the other side of that was me sharing that with everyone else, with as many people as possible. And kind of that joy and that excitement about Tunisian crochet has never gone away. So I still do it as I much as it. I can. I love it. And I, I wanna make your rancher shawl real bad. <laughs> I missed out on the kit stuff and I don't know when I would do it. Although maybe I should join the, the Cal. Yeah. Um, perfect timing. Uh, and actually my uh, operations manager, Chris Bales also wants to make it. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, that's one of my favorite patterns. So my, my, Absolute so favorite pretty. projects to make are blankets and shawls. I love them because they, they're kind of like blank blankets, slates, really? right? Oh, I adore blankets, especially once you get to the point where they're big enough to like lay over your lap while you're crocheting with them. I'm in heaven, full on heaven. But I love shawls because it's like, there's so many different shapes. There's so many different techniques that you can include in them, playing around with stitches and different yarns and fibers. Like you can go in a zillion different directions with a shawl. And the rancher shawl was really fun because I had this mini skein set just sitting in my stash. And I was like, I feel like you're ready to be something oh, exciting. It is. It is. Oh yeah. So it yeah, is. that was a really fun one. You know, I mean, the mini tassels really is what I was like, that's it. That's the one I got to make. <laughs> Love a mini tassel. The, oh, those tassels are so stinking cute. So like I use one entire mini skein to make the tassels because I was like, I want to make as many tassels yeah. as possible. That's what does it. It's yeah. like, because normally on a triangular shawl, you do one at the tip and at the corner, yep. but this is like, yeah. it's like, yeah. it's like ball fringe, but with tassels. Exactly. It. It's like little, <laughs> little tassel confetti. It's Love like, it. I was a fan. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just makes it so playful and fun. It does. So you have, um, this was a kit. This was a kit, but was it through a LYS or was it through? This was through an indie dyer called Montana Crochet. Okay. So actually a Montana Crochet based out of Montana. And she and I worked together on a few projects before. Um, but this yarn, actually, I just purchased from her. I think it had been in my stash for almost a year, uh, but I had just purchased it from one of her updates. Uh, and then when the pattern was coming out, I kind of gave her a heads up like, hey, this is going to be coming out. If you want to do kits, lovely, because you know people are going to want them. Um, so thankfully she was open to that. And so she had a limited number of kits available and then she did pre-orders and then those are coming out in January. So yeah, I've been keeping her busy. <laughs> I've been keeping her busy. <laughs> and then you've got, you've got a bunch of kits that Lion Brand drop ships, I'm assuming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then are you doing, are you sourcing any of the materials to for your own kits? Not your own, but are you having, yeah. are you doing fulfillment of any kits on your own? No, I actually try to keep That's fulfillment <laughs> of any products to an absolute minimum. Like I, it's it really has been a goal life. of mine within TO Yarncrafts to keep as much of my business in this room as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I do sign and send my own books, but other than that, um, all of my merch is drop shipped, kits with Lion oh, Brand, right. anything I do with an LYS, they send what out. About that, what about that sweatshirt number? I ordered the black one. Yeah. 
Um, and then I've got the gray one. Yarn is my love language. So it's, it's like black. It's just not white. I, yeah. Well, there's I like a black one. Now. There's black and gray. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So these are drop shipped as well. So, um, so one of the exciting things about running your own business is you get to find out about things like this. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, before yeah. a couple years ago, I didn't know drop shipping was a thing. I thought I would literally have to buy all these sweatshirts and all these sizes and keep them here and pack them yeah. and ship them. Um, but thankfully there are companies out there where you basically upload the art and kind of have the storefront where people can purchase from and the customer buys from you, you pay the company, the company ships to the customer. So I don't actually interact with the product at all other than, of course, getting the original samples. Um, so like I, I got to test a lot of sweatshirts before I landed on the ones that I decided to use in my merch. So that's kind of a fun part of the process. But as far as like the actual fulfillment, that's like everyone's least favorite part. So I just, I leave that to the professionals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got... The sweatshirt, which we mm -hmm. just talked about, the one you're wearing. Yes, I've and got then, the sweatshirt I'm wearing. Yep, and then I've got. What other products are you? So there's this metal tumbler. So this yeah, is stainless sure. steel. It's got a plastic lid and a metal straw. So I keep this one full of water all day, and then for coffee because I always have multiple beverages. That's that was the whole catalyst for this merch. So then I have this mug. So I call it the sticker mug because it's got all of my favorite kind of. I don't know, yarny things with some scissors, some yarn, my cats, Peanut and Shiva, they're on there. And then of course, if there's a sticker mug, there have to be actual stickers. So yeah. I just put those on my other water bottle. Um, yeah. And so there's just like some fun, like wearable things, some little accessories and stuff just to have around yourself while you're at your desk or, you know, around the house. Yeah. Just some fun little, fun little knicky knack things. Can we talk about your book? Oh yeah, we can. You talking about this one right here? Yeah, I don't know. I was just thinking about, yeah, that book. Yeah, this one, the Tunisian Crochet Handbook. So I've already rambled about how much I adore Tunisian Crochet and then it became a book because I'm like, you can never, I, I feel like with a technique like this and honestly, anything in craft, you can't ever have too many resources. Like everybody's perspective is a little bit different. So even though when I was learning about Tunisian Crochet, there were some resources out there. If anybody's interested in more information, I would definitely look up like Dora Ornstein or, you know, there's, yeah. there's tons of books and resources out there. But I was like, you know, I can put my unique spin on it. I have a very specific and unique design style and also a teaching style that there I thought tons, would- But not a well. tons of modern, young, like fresher. Yes. Like, like they're, it's not- Exactly. It, like you yeah. said, well, why are not more people talking about this craft? Yeah. Right, so yeah, you nice. could, it was a little tricky to find some of those um, more modern styles and also ones that you can make even with those more basic skills like mm -hmm. you know even if you learn some basic striping or some basic shaping like there's a lot that you can do with that so I wanted to kind of go from the perspective of yes I'm still a beginner maybe I just picked up this technique last week but I can make a cardigan I can make a blanket I can make a shawl I can do all of these things mm -hmm. so it's a really great place to start and I'm hoping it it sparks that creativity and that interest for folks to take it to that next level so it's a really it's a really great place to learn and and you can actually learn Tunisian crochet from this book I get that question all the time like oh do I still need a video not necessarily they're out there but you can learn it all from the book you definitely can that's wonderful and you could people can find it at their local yarn shop from you right from mm -hmm. tlyarncrafts.com yeah so you can find it from tlyarncrafts.com so the copies that are available on my site are signed and I pack them and I send them as they're ordered um, they are available at lots of local yarn stores so you can contact your local store and see if they have them um, you can also purchase them online from Barnes and Noble um, they don't have them in the stores which was like I don't know I'm still a little bummed about that like Barnes and Noble never carried them and um Joanne and Michaels never carried them it's, and... it's because it's if it makes you feel any better I don't know that Joanne ever carried one of my books really? like I had 13 it's a weird weird yeah it's mostly real estate I think yeah. I don't know I don't know Barnes and Noble it's weird because it, oh no Abrams was your publisher so it wasn't Abrams, yeah. it wasn't yeah. sterling I just think there's just not the real estate anymore. It's yeah. so different, but I like, it's like, you want to see it on a shelf. You Definitely. Want to I mean, and there's something special about that. Like I, when my book was coming out, there were a lot of my peers who also had books coming out and they were able to like make the little videos of them going to the store and finding the book. Uh, I, I was able to find it at Powell's bookstore out in Portland. Oh. Well, and I was pretty darn excited about that. So I was able to like sign cool. it. I mean, yeah. I was like, honestly, 
when it comes down to it, I'd rather see it at Powell's, you yeah. know, than being some of these other places. It was really special and very, very exciting to see it and, and run across it. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> Did you enjoy the book writing process? Ooh, depending on the day. Mm -hmm. Um, I there were definitely parts of it that I enjoyed, like all the photography. Oh my gosh, it was three straight days of photography and I just drank it all in. Um, designing the actual pieces was super fun. Going back and forth with the graphic designer at Abrams and kind of working on the layout was really fun. But the actual writing process, like sitting at the computer, typing it all out. I mean, it just, it looks like what every other day in my work life looks like. So, you know, on the scale to what I loved and what I didn't love, that's probably closer to the end, but the, the privilege to write a book at all, like, I love that entire. Okay, Math books aren't getting published now. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder yeah. to get something published. And, and the fact that I was able to, you know, work with a really exciting publisher and have some awesome guidance as a first time author, like it was a really amazing experience that, you know, if anybody has the opportunity even to self-publish a craft book, I would definitely say do it. It's a very unique skill to flex yeah. um, and one that I'm looking forward to flexing more in the future. Well, good. I love hint, that. Hint, hint. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm buying what you're selling, lady. I'm buying it. Um, well, I love, I love that. Um, I'm so excited. I, you know, I just, I just realized I've never got the book, which is weird because wow. Abram sends me, they send me like, I have, I, my laptop is propped <laughs> on, on, uh, you know, the make thrift men book from that. Yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. and we, and we promoted it in our box. So I will just buy one, but it's weird that I didn't get one, but I'm so, I'm so, um, happy for you. And I love that you are going to take a little time for yourself for the next couple of yeah. weeks. Um, I think we all need to do that. It's so easy to burn out doing what we do, it especially is. during the time where there's an insa insatiable need for content, you know, yeah, like, yeah. You have to be talking all the time. So. And I just, I mean, it's, it can get incredibly exhausting. Like even today I was like, okay, I should make a reel. And I spent so much time thinking like I should make a reel that I ended up making like a seven second reel of just me crocheting. I was like, it's literally all I can promote. I, it's all I can do today. But and, honestly, um, that might do better for you than like one that you took. I mean, you know, and that's, I know it's gross. That, what's so funny is like, when I, when I do like blogging or designing, it always is the simpler patterns and the simpler ideas that do incredibly well. And I'm finding that to be the same case with content creation right now. Yeah. So I'm like, simple is best and just get the idea across, point them to a meatier piece of content and kind of let them take, take the reins from there. Yeah. Yeah. I learned like, so I have not broken into the tick or the talks very well. It has not gone well for me. <laughs> Um, and I've, I've sl I'm slowly realizing that I was overthinking it. And, and I really realized that through reels that like, oh, they just want a little movement. Just a little bit. So yep. a little movement. And that's yeah. like, you don't mm -hmm. have to tell, you don't have to produce this. Like you produce a TV show, like just exactly. a little movement. Like, yeah. Just a little, just, and, and what I'm finding, because I was, I was really a bit frustrated when the transition to real started happening. I was like, oh gosh, nobody wants to see these pictures that I'm putting all this time I into. Know, and what I'm realizing, just like you said, is that simple really does perform super well. Like, do you have something quick to say? Really quick, just grab your phone, put the thing out there, put some cute little music behind it and, and call it a day. Sometimes it performs incredibly well. Sometimes it doesn't, but that that's even the case for the really high performers like yeah. every piece of content is not going to you know be your breakout piece yeah. um it's really about consistency and, and just putting something out there on on a schedule that makes sense for you so I was in the same boat totally overthinking it because it was new and it was different yeah. and now I'm like okay whatever whatever energy I had that day put a hundred percent of that energy into it and and let it go let it free yeah like yeah well <laughs> I think with that, we should, we should end it with that. Cause that is the advice it. that we all need for the end of a very up and down year. Yeah. Um, and um, I look forward to watching from the sidelines and what you're doing for 2023. I mean, same for you. I'm really excited to see um, who the next designer in residence is going to be and kind of what you all do together. I, I think Yarnier is just the the concept of a subscription box and this kind of discovery opportunity for people is so cool. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what you do next too. Thank you so much. Thank you for yeah. being here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.